What's up, Brady Seals? I am so glad I have you on my show once again. Oh, man. Listen, it's just good to be seen when you get my age. You know what I'm saying? God, you look like you're 30 years old. <laughs> oh, man. Thank you. I appreciate it. Yeah. you. I mean, I, I tell you, I was with uh, Off Subject, but I, I was on the road this past weekend with Lori Morgan yeah. and uh, doing some filming and... Uh, Right. She looks 30 years old, too. <laughs> so yeah. y'all, y'all, y'all take care of yourself really well. well. <laughs> for, me, for me, it's just, you know, the cheeseburger diet, man. You know what I'm saying? Mm. I, just, I just try my best. <laughs> I just try my best, you know what I mean? Wendy's or McDonald's? Well, you know, listen, here lately, here lately, I've been a Burger King guy. I don't know, oh, yeah. I don't know what happened, man, you know? Because for <laughs> years, I never ate Burger King at all. And then I drove by, and it was that special charbroiled smell in the air. And I was like, oh, man. I was like one of those cartoon characters floating to it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> that's, that's hilarious. That's funny because me and yeah. Jesse, Jesse Keith, were just talking about Burger King being a, uh, a hot spot as well for us. <laughs> right, right. Oh, yeah. Um, <clears throat> well, thank you so much for hanging out. I am really excited because – uh, the last time I talked to you has been a few years back when the podcast was just audio. Mm -hmm. And uh, now, of course, it is video. And since then, before we get into my love and all that good stuff, you put out a book, God Bless Texas and Me Too. Yep. Man. And not only did you put out a book, but I, you, you were pretty vulnerable, man, in that you, you really let a lot of people in to who you are, where you come from, and and, and you're the, the heart of Brady Seals today. Tell me, I want to know just how how that, had someone approached you about a book, or is it something you wanted to just do yourself to get out? Actually, the book idea had started like 17 years ago, you wow. know, um, and uh, and I started in I wrote like maybe a chapter or something like that. Then I just put it down. I had so many you know things going on and just never did finish it like most writers do, you know. Um, and so years later, 2017 rolls around and I went through a hellacious divorce, um, one that one that I did not want to go through. And uh, I was I was going through some you know, some hard right. times, man, I was struggling pretty good. And, um, you know, as they say, it's the dark night of the soul. Right. Mm. So I was going through that whole thing and, and I was reading a lot of Max Licato books. I don't know oh, if yeah. you're familiar with Max or Very not. Very familiar. You know, and, and, uh, he's such a great mentor teacher kind of guy, you know, and, but he's an exceptional writer, you know? And so I would, I would read his, books and he had this really cool songwritery kind of thing about how he would use metaphors and different little parallels in life to to go through the situations that he was talking about so i was reading those books and you know and they were really helping me and i thought you know maybe it's time that i just go ahead and just lay it all out there you know and um kind of tell the story um, I, you know, I, I've, I've gone through so much as the book will tell you, mm -hmm. um, but I certainly didn't want to throw anybody under the bus. I didn't want to talk about things that maybe I shouldn't. There's a lot of road stories that I left out, you know, a lot of, a lot of stuff that, that I've done in my past that mm -hmm. I kind of chose to leave out. Um, mm -hmm. and, uh, but I, I really tried to kind of broad stroke it a little bit and just kind of let everybody know God was with me. Mm. You know? And um, I, I've, I've been a Christian for as long as I can remember. And, and it basically the book just kind of takes the reader through my life, showing God being there through the good, bad and the ugly and um, blessing me every step of the way. 
even though I was sinning. Yeah. You know? And oh, yeah. uh, so I just I just thought that it might be kind of a cool little read, you know. And uh, so I put the thing out and and I've had a lot of really, really wonderful people come to me. Great feedback. And I, I'm, I'm so glad that I did it. I am, too. I am, too. And and that book is uh, I mean, it's on your website, right? People can still check out the book there. Yeah, just BradySeals.com. Yep. Um, and, and if you order it off my website, as opposed to like Amazon, you can mm-hmm. also get it on Audible. I, I read, I, I recorded myself doing the whole thing. Um, you cool. can get it on there as well. But you can you can uh, get it on my website and I'll autograph for it. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's even better. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. BradySeals.com, buy the book and you he will autograph it for you. Uh, well, it is. I've, I've, I've read... Um, my cousin, Angel, had bought the book, actually, now that I'm thinking about it, I guess it was a few years ago when you came to Blairsville at Granddaddy Mims. Yeah. You performed a uh, solo date there, and uh, she uh, got the book that night, so that's Man, very cool. sun's coming out. See, I see, I see it. It's you, Britt. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> You're bringing the sunshine today, man. This is good. Thank God. It hasn't... It hasn't. Uh, it's not here, though. <laughs> I know, right? It hasn't shown here in like freaking four days. Man, man. I I know. Yeah. Um, I'm so ready for the time change in Mar- March 12th. Yeah, it's when we get longer days, and I'm ready for spring and summer. I I love things about winter, but man, I'm ready for the warm. <laughs> Me too. Me too. Um, now moving right along, you have a new version of my love 30th 30 years brady i mean seriously uh 30th anniversary edition of my love and that was on the big time little texas record that i had when i was a little kid i had it i think i was like 10 years old when i bought it and uh i remember riding around listening to every song all the time on my lawnmower Mm -hmm. when i was like 10 years old but my love was on that album. It was one of the biggest singles that year. And you just, you're releasing it on Valentine's day. Tell me about how this came about. Well, you know, I, 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 it's kind of a strange scenario. Um, I was working on this other project. I won't go into the whole thing, but I was working on like a little Texas kind of tribute kind of thing. And, and that kind of like went South. I won't go into the whole story, but, um, but with all that, I'm thinking, well, good gosh, man, I need to go back and revisit some of these songs that I haven't uh, like really recorded in a long mm-hmm. time, you know. Mm-hmm. And um, as you know, I mean, even even Taylor Swift is going back and re-recording yep. all of her albums, you know, just just simply because when you sign with major record companies, they own those masters, you know. Mm-hmm. So anytime I want to, you know put it up on, on uh, YouTube or wherever I can't, you know, and it's pretty sad. It's like, it's gracious. You know, you'd think after a certain amount of time, it would revert back to me or something, but it hasn't. So I decided, you know what, I'm I'm going to go ahead and record it. And, uh, and I was in uh, a meeting with a fellow who was working for a booking agency here in town. And he said, well, you know, next year is my love's 30th anniversary. And I was like, uh, no, you know, and, uh, and he says, man, you ought to put that out. And I'm like, it's a great idea, you know? Yes. So, uh, so I did, you know, and, and, uh, I called my old manager slash producer slash publisher, Christy DiNapoli, a guy, by the way, Yeah. called him up and I said, Hey, I said, um, would you want to go in cahoots with me and let's record a greatest hits album? Right. Oh, wow. And, uh, and he said, absolutely, let's do it. You know? So, so we're going to put on all of the songs like God bless Texas, uh, kick a little, uh, my love, what might've been Amy's back in Austin. And then I'm going to do some of my originals, uh, my solo stuff, like, uh, another year. Another you, another me. Uh, Hillbillies love it in the hay. Yeah, you know, and uh, and 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 a couple more on there as well. And so, 
So that's going to be following the My Love release. Okay. 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 Yeah. I, I got you now. Are uh, are you, when you go back when you go to re-record these songs, um, are you? I had okay. I had Brian White on a couple weeks ago, and he's getting ready to re-record his hits. Right. And he he said, "I want to stay true, you know, for the fan's sake, but I'm also going to make it, you know, fresh, but not take too many liberties because I don't want right. to, you know. Sometimes fans are like, boy, that ain't Amy's back in Austin.' That's right. So so what? So are you approaching it as fresh, but still something yeah, the fans I'm are going to basically beefing up the sound, um, just making it uh, a little bit more modern, but all of the yeah. progressions, all of the arrangements." will be pretty much the same. Okay. You know? um, mm -hmm. Yeah, I didn't want to stray too far from the original because, you know, like me, I, I, I like like when I, you know, whenever I go see somebody live, mm -hmm. take, for example, Sheryl Crow. Yeah. Big, big Sheryl Crow fan. Me too. <laughs> uh, the, the, the only thing, the only complaint that I have about Sheryl, and I love her to death, she's great. Don't get me wrong. But when he, whenever you see her live, she takes a lot of liberties with those melodies, you know, same thing with Willie, you know, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm Willie's biggest fan, but Willie takes a lot of liberties with those melodies, man. And sometimes you're trying to sing along and then he's off on something else or she's yep. off on another tangent. And I'm like, man, mm. you know what I'm mm. saying? So, so, yeah. so that's I tried to try to stay <laughs> to the original. Yeah. That's awesome. Um, now, you re didn't you re-record God Bless Texas a couple years ago? Is that I did. It was yeah. a slower, more swampy kind of thing. I liked it though. I I, I did. Thank I listened you. to it today, actually. Thank you. Yeah, I I I I recorded that thing. Uh that's that's my fiance in the video. I don't know if you know that or not, but um, I did. Yeah. Her name her name is Denny Baker and yep. um, soon to be Denny Seals. Uh -huh. um, but uh she's in that video. Of course, she's as hot as she can be. You know? and, uh, so I had to put her in there. And uh, so so we we did that uh, to go along with God Bless Texas and Me Too, mm -hmm. the book, right? Yep. Now, on the greatest hits, it's going to be a brand new version. It's going to be sped up and, and, and going to sound a little bit more like the original. Right. I, that's what I was curious about. Yeah. Uh, but that version, I'm telling you, I, I like how you said the swampy. I like that description. Yeah, because uh, I get it. Uh, slower and a little. Slower, yeah, you know? I, I love, but it was great. Um, Thank you. And, and the video is awesome. And um, so y'all, I, I did know that y'all got y'all are engaged and y'all are uh, gonna be married. And yep. uh, I know you are on cloud nine, and and just God is continuing to bless you. You know. You know, it's so true. Um, May seventh is the is the elopement date. We're not gonna yeah. do a big wedding, but we're gonna do an elopement. And ironically enough, I we haven't exactly picked it yet, but I think that we're going to um, get married at the same place that I did the video for another you, another me, right? Oh, wow, yeah, it's a cool place here in town. Uh, so we're going to be doing that, and uh, we're 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 super super excited. I mean, we've been together now for six years, you know, so it's time. Yeah, yeah, uh, it is. It is time. It is. And she is, it's funny. Um, this is before I, I, we booked you for the show, but you know how you get suggestions on uh, Facebook and all that? Well, I had mm -hmm. a suggestion pop up just a couple of weeks ago on our podcast page and it was a uh, Denny Baker. Really? And it had, yeah. It was, uh, it's it suggested to follow Denny Baker singer. Wow. And, uh, and uh, I think she just got a modeling deal. Didn't she? He did. She yeah. Did. Congratulations on that. Thank you. I'm I'm so proud of her. Um, you know, she's she's very very just humble and just been you know. But she 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 did all that on her own. She's just, yeah. She she did it, and I'm so proud of her. And we've been on a couple of shoots here lately, and she's just so pretty. And I just I just can't wait to see what she has in store as well. Now she does she uh she sings too, right? She sings yeah. absolutely, man. We we we've, we've done little Facebook things and stuff where we'll sing. You know, I, I remember we did that that song "Shallow," you know, yeah, Lady Gaga and all that kind of stuff. 
we've done uh, Louisiana woman, Mississippi man, you know, Yes. <laughs> I, did my, I did my Conway, you know? So, <laughs> um, so, so yeah, we've done uh, Merle Haggard tunes and mm. all that stuff. she's a, she's a great singer too. Very yeah, talented. That's awesome, man. Um, <clears throat> moving right along and, I still haven't seen either either one of these that you are a big part of, but we'll we'll, we'll start with Petty Junkies. Are y'all still doing stuff? Okay, yes. you know, it, it, you know, the Petty Junkies is this cool little Tom Petty tribute band that yeah. that, that I get together with uh, these dudes. I, I'm, I'm telling you, um, it's 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 five of the dudes and me, and um, some of the best musicians i have ever played with um wow. each one of those guys are so accomplished um we like to brag that between all six of us we've played on over 300 number one songs right <laughs> so, so there's <laughs> it's crazy and we and we also like to joke that lonnie wilson our drummer has played on the 200 of them <laughs> he's just so good man oh that's awesome man it's so good and um so it's me jerry mcpherson mark hill lonnie wilson blair masters and gordon kennedy uh which gordon's gonna be coming down to blairsville pretty soon oh me to do that song that's great over granddaddy mims um so but yeah i mean we we try our best to just do justice mm -hmm. we don't we don't impersonate we don't try to look like tom petty and the heartbreakers or anything yeah. like that we just really play the music as well as we possibly can mm. you know yeah to honor to honor some some of the greatest rock songs ever to be put yeah. out yeah and i still i do i hold tom petty in high a high place yeah, in my absolutely. musical library yep yep so but uh you got petty junkies and you've got some dates coming up with S seals and cross two two that's right yeah and where now tell me how that started or how you even was it your idea to put that together well, it sort of just happened, to tell you the truth about it. I was doing a little project called the Seals Family Album, right? Oh, okay. And I was going to do some, uh, like, three songs by me, three songs by Jimmy Seals, three songs by Dan Seals, and three songs by my Uncle Troy. Mm -hmm. um, and so I had Lua come over, which is Dash Croft's daughter, by right. the way. Mm -hmm. And uh, and I said, hey, I, I want you to sing on, you know, Summer Breeze or whatever, you know. So she came over and we started singing together. And just immediately it was like, uh oh, it hit you. chemistry what, immediately, you know, and, and it's and it's so wild because back in the 90s. Um, when I had out Another You, Another Me, it was right after Little Texas. Mm -hmm. I went overseas and I did this European tour in Lua came over with me to do that tour. So she would sing Winona's part and all that kind of stuff. She's an incredible singer. And um, so we've known each other a very, very long time. But when we started singing this last time, man, which was, gosh, it's been like four or five years now, um, it was just special. So I, I, I put the Seals Family album, you know, on pause for a second. And we started... Uh, learning the hits summer breeze get closer diamond girl uh we may never pass this way again right yeah, and then we, yeah. and then we went album deep with some stuff and and then we've even recorded some original stuff now so oh, we've cool. been doing that for quite some time we play a lot of theaters you know and stuff yeah. like that. and uh we just have a blast doing it What's the what's the crowd response to this? I mean, or has it has it surprised you? Or I mean, are these like like what 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 kind of uh, are are the crowds like that 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 you draw with uh, uh, this duo? Are are they just lovers of those songs? Are they coming to see you two? Or oh or man, little... yeah, there's 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 so many people that comes up at the end of the set and says, yeah. oh my gosh, I was at the concert and you know. Uh, 
L.A. when they did, you know, the Hollywood Bowl. Oh, and wow. All these kinds of stuff. I'm like, oh, my gosh, you know. So it is That's so awesome. wonderful to carry the torch, if you will, and mm-hmm. really uh, try our best to do justice to those classics. And um, and then, of course, we throw in um, uh, Dan Seals or England Dan and John Ford Coley tune. Uh, I'd really love to see you tonight. Yeah. Uh, so it's 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 really our honor mm. to be able to do that sort of thing. And and luckily, um, you know, Jimmy and Dash both loved the idea. Um, yeah. Yeah. And, and Dash was the one that says, well, you're Seals and Crofts. Uh, just put a two on it, you know, and that's and that's what we did. You now, know? That's a cool story that you just shared. I love that. I, I love that. Yeah. Um, well, this right here is awesome. If you want me to be closer to you, get closer to me. Darling, if you want me to be closer to you, get closer to me. Oh. Darling, if you want me to be her harmony yeah dude her harmony is killer oh she's spectacular she's really really great i mean she should have had a solo deal back in the day we talk about it all the time um she's really really great Mm -hmm. and uh just fun she's she's like one of the dudes when we get out there on the road you know yeah we, we hop in the car with the trailer and just just hit the road man that's awesome yeah, that's awesome. It's um, how, well, you know, before I got some more stuff to ask you, but just thinking of that, um, you know, back in what was what what year did first time for everything and and some guys Ooh, come out was 90, that ninety one maybe something yeah like I mean it, y'all were in y'all y'all started in the early nineties absolutely right? yeah I mean I yeah so um. I'll tell you just a real quick synopsis of, of the little Texas thing. We, we all got together. Uh, me and Dale Gray, the drummer were the last two members of the band to come in. They were a fifties and sixties band at the time called the varsities. Okay. I and, did not and, know this. Yeah. So, so we, Dell and I were playing with this guy named Josh Logan, who was this MCA curb record country artist. Right. Mm-hmm. So we were way up in Massachusetts somewhere and we were playing the big E state fair and we were sharing the stage with the varsities. Right. And they were playing all Shirelles and uh, Buddy Holly stuff and just old 50s and 60s stuff. Right. So they were staying at the same hotel and we became friends. And then, gosh, maybe four or five months later, whatever, they called me. They called me up and said, hey, you know, um, you want to be in a band? And we're like, well, yeah, but I'm not sure about a fifties and sixties thing. I appreciate it. So it never went anywhere. Well, they called back and they said, well, um, we, we may have a guy, Christy DiNapoli that I told you about mm-hmm. earlier, who, uh, who might know someone at Warner brothers to get us a record deal. And I was like, mm-hmm. hmm, okay. Um, so I got interested and they said, well, do you think Dale would want to do it too? And I said, well, I'll call him. So <clears throat> we, we decided to go ahead and take the leap of faith, um, to leave Josh. We love Josh, by the way. Uh, yeah, but we left Josh for an opportunity. And, uh, so we all went on a cruise ship, um, and we basically played out several varsity shows with them. Right. And um, during the day on this cruise ship, we would go into the Grand Lounge. There would be nobody in there. And we would learn a whole country set, right? Oh, wow. Which, you know, Dell and I were, you know, we were already immersed into that whole world anyway. You know, okay. we, were, we were playing hockey talks from Catskill Mountains to Paso Robles, uh, Paso Robles California. So anyway, um we we worked it up and you know the, the there were two girls in the band tim's wife and porter's wife did not right? know that either yeah at the beginning right and and um so christy and a guy named doug growl which was um he, 
he was the A and R guy for Warner Brothers. Said, well, you know, I don't know about the girls. So would would you guys want to do just six guys? And we're mm. like, well, we'll we'll try, you know. So that's what we did. And our first show was at Miss Kitty's in Atlanta. Marietta, Georgia. Marietta, Georgia, yeah. Right? Open yeah. up for Travis Tritt. Right. <laughs> so that was our that was our first show. And uh, of course, he was our label mate at the time. Yeah. And, um and it was it was before he even had out Country Club, you know. Miss Kitty's was a big deal back in the day. It was huge, man. Yeah. So uh, so we went in there and started started paying our dues, man. And for the next two years, it was just nonstop honky tonks, man. Yeah. And, um. So that was that was the beginning of Little Texas. And that was before the uh, the first record came out. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. yeah, we were just we were just getting our feet wet, man. Yeah. And, Playing those, uh, you know, Billy Bob's and uh -huh. Chandelier out in Texas and yeah. uh, Tulsa City Limits and huh. Grizzly Rose and all of those honky tonks, man. You know? Oh yes, man. Oh Grizzly Rose in Denver. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, that's a yeah. very we famous music venue. I, I swear, we went. We we got we got a van and a trailer and we just drove everywhere. It was crazy. Oh, that was pre bus days. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Hey, look, okay, so let me ask you this. So when after uh well first, did you write did you get any uh credits on the first record? Yes, I did. Um I didn't write as many that mm -hmm. that record because uh Porter and Dwayne O'Brien were writing most of the songs. Right. Um, you know, they wrote First Time for Everything. Okay. Some guys have all the love. Um, um what else did they write? Oh, you and Forever and Me. Mm. You know, that they wrote those three but then th then we put out a little song that i co-wrote called what were you thinking and that was m the first one little you know we just just a little tad bit before before we jumped into big time and by then i had kind of gotten into right. writing non-stop yeah you know? and um and we really kind of wrote out of necessity because we were being pitched terrible music out of nashville <laughs> oh. <laughs> you know what i mean you know we weren't you know we we didn't have anything we weren't uh yeah we weren't on the charts yet you know so mm -hmm. being pitched a lot of the b kind of material yeah yeah uh it's like I, alabama passed on this one boys you want this <laughs> right exactly. Uh, exactly. um when big time rolls around though i mean it's it's like well you know, you had those, was it four? I think four singles came off that first record, right? Or four uh, or five. Three, you and three that I, three, I think. Well, um, I'd rather miss you came off of it. So that'd be four. What, what, not, was I'd rather miss you the first record? I think I'd rather miss you was the first record. Yes. Oh, I'm, that's what I'm talking about is the first oh, yeah. record. Yeah. yeah so so y'all. So y'all had four singles off that first record, right? Yes, exactly. So there okay. was um, first yeah. time, first time, um, you, you and forever, forever. me, um, and then I'd rather miss you. First time for everything, and what? Well, some well, guys, yes, and some guys, yeah. yes, yeah. Um, so y'all, y'all had a following, and then big time, just like shoot y'all skyrocket to the moon. <laughs> yeah, it was it, huge. It, it was. It was crazy, man. We were we were out on the road with Clint Black, and uh, it was the Hard Way tour. And it, I mean, Clint was like, you know, oh yeah, he was rocking and rolling back then. Oh yeah, you know? big big production and everything. And um, so we, I think that we started off touring with him at Caesar's Palace in Las Vegas. Oh wow! So we started doing that, and then we went on a stadium tour with him, and uh, and things. Things were rocking, man. I mean, like, like, a, like a lot. And yeah, I remember, and I tell this story, you know, every now and then. I remember, you know, Porter and I being on one side of the stage, and then the other guys would go out on the other side. You know, Dell would go out first, you mm -hmm. know, get the beat going, and then those three guys would run out, and then Porter and I would run out. But we were backstage, and the lights in the stadium went down and um, and the crowd was going little Texas. Little. Oh, wow. And it was, it was like 
chills. That's, that, but that's, I just got chills because I can hear it. You know, and uh, and I turned to Porter and he turned to me and we're like, we did it. You yeah. Know, we did it. And uh, and it was such, such a incredible ride. I, wow. You know, um, I, I'm just, again, I'm so blessed. I'm so blessed that it happened. Mm, man, what a, that, I, I'm sure there were multiple semis and buses and it was the that was a big deal yeah it was it was it was uh yeah and then we did the the uh travis tritt and trisha yearwood rock and country tour right the budweiser oh, rock and country tour and we went out and that's when it just got really crazy and um and i'll tell you Britt, you know it, it and you know you you'll realize this when you read my book mm-hmm. um there's there's a burnout factor, man. Oh and, yeah. And you you when you're touring so much, and I had been touring since I was 16 years old. Good. God. Whenever whenever I left Ohio, um, I didn't I didn't go my high school year in senior my senior year. I actually went out on the road, uh, and I did my homework out on the road and took night school and graduated with my class. Right. Wow. So I was at it really early. Um, and, um, so I'd been doing that, you know, I spent two years out on the road with, uh, Josh and then three years out on the road with, um, no, six, six years out on the road with little Texas. Mm. And I'm telling you, man, that's a lot. It was, it was a lot. The year, the year before I left the band, we, we played, 322 dates. Wow. <laughs> that's it's, I mean, it's like, what? You know, but that's dates. Yeah. That that's not not days on the road. That's oh dates. yeah. So it was, it was it was insane. You know, I think that is insane. Country music magazine or something or whatever said that we were the hardest working band in country music, and it was the truth, man. We were we were nonstop. Mm. Wow. That's crazy, but it, man. But it affected me, man. It, I mean, it really, really oh, yeah. got to me. And, and you know, because you know, I had gotten to the point to where I was doing a lot of the pre-production on my own. Right mm. now, we took we we worked so much that we literally had to take a um, recording rig out on the road with us. So, like backstage of the stadiums, we would we would be recording pre-production for our next record. But whenever we would get home, um, I'd be in the studio, man. You know, I'm, yeah. I'm recording the vocals. I'm recording, you know, getting Porter to come over. And it was usually Porter and I, you know. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I was the one engineering. I was the one that was doing all that kind of stuff. And it just got to the point to where I was like, I can't do it anymore, guys. You know, yeah. and, that's, and that's what happened, you know. Um, was that mainly for the Kick Little record or... It was yeah, yep. Yeah, it was it was for the kick a little record. We were recording that, yeah. Um, while we were supporting big time, yeah. You know, wow. it was just it was insane, man. It was it was really really insane. And I and I just went through anxiety. Uh, went through uh, the anxiety spawned depression. Um, I had you know panic attacks that that I just I. I I just thought that I was losing my mind because mm-hmm. a lot of people didn't really talk about it that much then. No, yeah. And uh, and I just felt like out of control, man. I just I felt like I felt like it would always be that way. I think I felt like my mind was broken, you know. Mm-hmm. You know? And and I tried to explain myself to the guys, and they're like, "What? What yeah. are you talking about?" They didn't understand. I mean, I I mean, I look back on it now, and I don't blame them. I don't blame them for not understanding, mm. you know, um, I didn't understand. Yeah. You know? So it, it was, it was a very difficult time uh, to have to leave that group. Um, mm. And I mean, truthfully, I didn't want to, it's just, they didn't want to slow down. Right. And if they had slowed down, I'd have stayed. Yeah. Simply. Yeah. yeah. Man is the, just thinking back on on all that man thanks thanks for being real on here i, well, I love that 
you know, look, I, I tell you, man, you know, as as you know, growing older, first of all, it sucks. <laughs> it sucks, man. You know, but at the same time, at the same time, there's this peacefulness that 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 happens. Mm -hmm. uh, and you kind of you're you're okay. You're okay with how things went. Yeah. Um, to just survive it all, um, I'm thankful for, to have the opportunity to do the things that I've done, mm -hmm. to meet Willie Nelson, to meet uh, George Jones, to play the Opry and meet Roy Acuff and Bill Monroe and, you know, the just, uh, you know, for Dolly Parton to flirt with me and, mm -hmm. you know, all of those things. I'm like, What? Thank you, Jesus, uh, yeah. for this incredible life that I've had. And yeah, it's it's had some hiccups and it's had some really, really, really bad emotional times. But I tell you, man, I look back on it now and uh, I wouldn't I wouldn't really change a thing. Yeah. I love that. What uh, do you ever have people after they read your book and or even listen to uh, stuff like this do you ever give are you able to ever give someone advice on anxiety or panic attacks or depression absolutely you know what thank you for saying that because i tell you um i don't know if you see it like i do but more and more and more people suffer from it every day it seems these days um compared to even back then um mm -hmm. The world is going so fast, you know, us having that mobile phone on all the time, yep. having access to something or somebody having access to you all the time can really, really uh, get the adrenaline happening, you know. And um, so so I know that people suffer from anxiety and, and depression Um all the time these days. And my, my biggest advice is, first of all, turn to God and your doctors, right? Yep. Um, I, the, you know, I mean, he's the great physician. Yep. Go, go there first. Um, but I certainly do not, uh, you know, downplay um, medication, you know? Mm -hmm. Me either. Sometimes it's very necessary. Um, sometimes it's not. But but when it is, you know, do what your doctors tell you to do. Um, yeah. But uh, but 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 I would say, first of all, slow down. Mm -hmm. I don't I don't know if you remember that taxi. I don't know if you remember that taxi thing where. Uh, um. Where they're where they're in there trying to get their driver's license or whatever, you know, and the and the and the guy that uh, he talks like that, you know, uh, the you know the Lord, you know, the guy that was in uh, Back to the Future, right? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Remember him, you know, he was Doc. he was he was in that thing or whatever, and and Alex was over there taking the driver's uh, test or whatever, and and he was trying to cheat, you know, because that Lloyd guy was in the room, and he goes, "What does a yellow light mean?" And he goes slow down and he goes what does a yellow light mean slow down you know so it just it just this yeah. whole thing but but anyway i got off subject there but i'm saying if you are freaking slow down man mm -hmm. slow down if if it's work stay home yeah if it's family stay away from them. Mm -hmm. You know, you got to get peace, man. Yeah. If, you know, look, life's too freaking short, man. Mm -hmm. You know, you got to do what you got to do. Um, so, uh, yeah, I would, I would just say, you know, turn to God, you know, because he, he can help you, you know, mm -hmm. around yourself and positivity. You know, for me, I like to listen to sermons, uh, there's this cool guy on, um, he's an old English guy. He's dead and gone now. Oh, who is it? Derek Prince. 
Okay. Go check out Derek Prince, man. Um, very, very uh, intellect, um, uh, intellectual preacher slash teacher and um, kind of charismatic a little bit, you know, mm -hmm. uh, but not over the top. He's yeah. not like, you know, some of these guys. Um, you know what I'm saying? I, I was going to say, don't, don't say no. Names. I'm not going to say You know what I'm saying? <laughs> But uh, he's like some of these dudes, but he's, he's the real deal, man. And, and yeah. but, but whenever I go to bed at night, if I can't sleep or whatever, mm -hmm. I'll listen to some Derek Prince, man. And I love that. And uh, so, so that's just my two cents. Yeah. And uh, well, yeah, man, some of these uh, incredible theologians that are, you know, from the 1800s or from the, or, even early 1900s there's some great sermons and messages for sure amen yeah i love amen. that you said that and brought that up and max locato i love max uh Lucado's great man he's got some great powerful books you know yeah i've got a lot of max locato books from over the years mm -hmm. i started i started reading locato when i was probably 99 or 2000 maybe 01 somewhere oh, yeah. right there yeah some here in the library right here it's just yeah Love it, you know. Um, now, how do you? Uh, at one time, I don't know if it's called mentoring, but weren't you helping out? Like some, like if someone wanted to work with Brady Seals, or or uh, you would, or, or, or a songwriter that you would, they would pitch it to you or contact you, and you were, you know, you would record it for them or whatever. Yeah, absolutely. You know. Yeah. You know, I, I I certainly have not been that kind of guy and, you know, the cigar smoking guy. I can make you a star, you know, and all that. Yeah. Kind of, I'm not that kind of guy. Right. Um, But, you know, if you know, if there's like a new talented um, kid out there, mm -hmm. male or female, doesn't matter, you know, um, that's 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 wanting some pointers. Uh, you know, I, of, of course, I mean, uh, you know, I mean, I, I, I don't have as much time these days as right. I, maybe two or three years ago when I was doing that a lot. Yeah. But, yeah. You know, but when I, when, whenever I am off the road and, and, and somebody can catch me, um, of course, you know, yeah. and I, I think it's, I don't even know how much I charge anymore. I, I usually, I think that it was like 250 for like four hours. Yeah. You can ask me whatever you want to ask me. You yeah. know, um, if you want to just talk road stories, I got plenty of those, <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah. but, um, but, but if it's, you know, but if it's, you know, learning and songwriting, mm -hmm. if it's uh music theory, uh, whatever the case may be. Yeah. That's, that's cool, man. And yeah. uh, in between everything else, are you still writing and still uh, being inspired, being creative? Oh man. Yeah. You know, um, I, I, I love it. You know, I, I don't, I don't think that I could not write mm. now, now there's times when I just don't, yeah. you know, just yeah. don't write just to kind of, kind of give my brain a rest. Oh yeah. Um, and, uh, and, and you start coming up with fresh ideas and start listening mm -hmm. instead of writing, you yeah. know? Yeah. Um, and you know, I'm 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 very much a uh, uh, person that that if if I got kind of like catch on to something like a, like a new music or whatever, I want to write like eight, seven songs like that. You know? Yeah, yeah. I, I just get in, I get inspired and I get excited about things or whatever. You know? Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, but no, I love to write, man. I I, I I I'm 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 thankful that I've been able to make a living at it all these years, you know, that's awesome. Uh, well, Brady, I'm not going to keep you much longer. I just wanted to say how grateful I am that you came on. Uh, we, the show will promote the new, my love, uh, single. And I wish you nothing but the best with, uh, seals and cross Two, uh, petty junkies, Brady seals, all the things that you are doing. Um, I'm proud of you because I know that you are, you are the real deal. And I'm so grateful that you were vulnerable enough to share some insight of just turning to the Lord and and uh, and uh, find a good doctor because there's nothing wrong with going to the doctor to get help. Um, yeah, and I'll, I, I I will say this: drugs and alcohol will not do it. 
Oh. I can tell you that for sure. Yeah. It might put a Band-Aid on it for a night or two. Right. But then it's going to get worse. Mm -hmm. Don't do that. Turn to, turn to God. Turn to family. Turn to people who are positive uh, lights in your um, life. And, and man, I, I really appreciate you having me on. Um, and thanks to everyone for tuning in again. Valentine's Day, man. That's right. My love is coming out. That's you. right. I can't wait to hear it, man. It's I'm excited about it. <laughs> well, uh, well, maybe later on this year when this greatest hits project, you think it'll be 24 or? Oh yeah. I think, yeah, okay. I think it'll be later on this year and, uh, and have me back on if you will. Yeah, and we we'll will talk about, uh, each song, you know? Oh man, that'd be awesome. That'd okay. be awesome. Love Brady. It. Uh, if I don't see you March 23rd at granddaddy's, then, uh, I will, uh, see you some other time on the road. I'm sure. Sounds great, man. Thanks for having me on. See you, buddy. I'll talk See to you soon. Bye-bye. They say